tracking Daryl tonight. And Ross, you tell us it could hit Jamaica as soon as Wednesday. Yeah, at least great by it, if not get very, very close to making landfall there, Anthony. And yeah, just a, a daunting scene from Barrow as it's gone through uh, multiple eyewall replacement cycles here over about the last 24 to 48 hours as it blew through Granada and those Windward Islands and is now moving just to the south of Puerto Rico by a couple hundred miles. But as Anthony mentioned, now a category of five storm. National Hurricane Center's 11 p.m. advisory just issued moments ago. Maximum winds at 160 miles per hour as it does continue to trek westward here over the next several days will likely go potentially just to the south of Jamaica, although some models do take it slightly northward. So Jamaica would be kind of in the bullseye or that next area that we're going to be looking for a potential landfall. Now it will likely begin to slowly graduate as it or, um, will slowly weaken, I should say, over the next couple of days as it moves westward, primarily because it's going to move into a slightly less favorable area, uh, primarily for wind shear. Well, Kind of just get ripped apart as it moves further and further westward towards Mexico. So that is good news for folks downstream of barrel here over the next couple of days. Any kind of potential U.S. impacts will likely only be in far southern Texas at the most as it does move through the Yucatan and potentially then into the Gulf of Mexico. But obviously we'll be on your side here over the next couple of days continuing to track a barrel uh, to its fullest. Now back behind it, we also have another tropical wave, only about a 40% chance of development over the next seven days. It will be much, much weaker than barrel is. So once again, not too concerned about that. That will also likely be moving right in behind it there in the Caribbean. Now here closer to home tomorrow will be another weather impact alert day, 60% coverage for not only heavy downpours, but some thunderstorms as well primarily from 2 o'clock and then continuing through uh, your afternoon and evening up until about 7 p.m. tomorrow night. So storms will likely initiate right along that sea breeze convergence near the St. Johns River in that I-95 corridor and then will gradually shift further and further westward throughout the remainder of your evening there tomorrow. Localized flooding, especially on roadways, will be a major concern, especially with how much rain we have seen here over the last couple of days. So just keep that in mind if you are going to be out on the roads or really just out and about it all tomorrow. Similar story for Wednesday then as well. Slightly less coverage overall, but we will still see some showers and storms out there. Temperature wise, right around that 90 degree mark. So still another pretty hot and humid day. Real field temperature is going to be anywhere from about 100 to 105. Now, as you look ahead to your holiday forecast here, 4th of July on Thursday, honestly looking pretty good. Low 90s temperature wise, slightly lower rain chances. And that will be the trend the whole way through the holiday weekend. Friday, Saturday, then Sunday, rain chances bump up a little bit, as will the temperatures as well. So really, the start of uh, your holiday plans will probably be the best. Then those rain chances will creep back up, not only on Sunday, but potentially even into Monday as well. So again, another weather impact alert day tomorrow. 70% chance of rain there. Hot and humid weather continuing then into the holiday weekend. Thank you, Ross.